All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what is soon to be an award-winning episode of Student of the Gun Radio. This is what you've been waiting for. This is the show for which you have been waiting. Uh, duh and or aloha. Hawaii struggles to ignore the Supreme Court while pretending that they're not. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, as, as you guys know, it, well, if you don't know, pay attention. Uh, our friend James Yeager uh, has been diagnosed with ALS. Uh, ALS has no cure. And um, so it's it's a giant suck. And one of the things that James is trying to do for his family is to make sure that when he departs from this world, that he departs without leaving them with debt. He wants to leave them debt free as he is when he departs from this world. And so what we're trying to do, uh, we're trying to do a small part uh, on our end. Uh, we partnered with a, uh, a Brian at Survival on Purpose. And we're Jared has been doing the legwork for this. And he set up a separate page. This is separate. It's, stand, it's, it's away from Student of the Gun because we, we know why we couldn't do that. Because our, our thing has gun in it. And uh, all the socialist media will throttle us. If we say the word gun in the title. So you guys need to go to Jared Markle, J-A-R-R-A-D. That's Juliet, Alpha, Romeo, Romeo, Alpha, Delta, Markle, M-A-R-K-E-L dot com. And uh, you can donate. And right now, the, the, the four prize packages or the, the, uh, the giveaways or whatever is uh, training at Thunder Ranch. Training with Student of the Gun. This would be a one-on-one -on -one private two-day class uh, or one-on-one -on -one range day for two. It's a one-on-one -on -one range day for two with none other than Professor Paul Markle. Uh, and it will be either in Wyoming or Utah, um, depending on what you want to do. Pat McNamara has donated a private training day with Pat in North Carolina and then Gunsight Institute is a three-day class or $1,200 credit uh, in Paulden, Arizona, winner's choice. So uh, get in there right now and uh, buy a ticket, and uh, you will be eligible for that. So uh, get in there and support James. Uh, he needs it. He James is... James is one of the most generous human beings on planet Earth and always has been, uh, if you don't know that, if you're not aware of it. So uh, the hyperlink is in the show notes, so you can just open it up, click it, go there, and uh, and generate to a good or donate to a good cause, and you could win a, uh, a private, there's a lot of good training here, private one-on-one -on -one training sessions, so do that and then uh, after we come back uh, i'm going to give you guys a reminder after we come back from the opening music so listen up welcome to student of the gun radio proudly brought to you from the sds import studio if you want quality that's affordable visit sdsimports.com we don't just talk guns and gear we also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, cat in the hat and that be that buster rhyme. Now's the time for me to remind you about the Student of the Gun Guardian Challenge. And uh, Zach, will you put the Guardian Challenge article uh, link in there? But I'm not going to talk about the challenge itself. If you guys have not read the article and what I am challenging you to do, essentially I'm challenging you to eat better, uh, to get better nutrition, to cut out the dietary poison, which is killing you and keeping you from reaching your fullest potential, and then to actually get your ass up off of the couch. I said, I said that word. Uh, off of the couch, out of a chair, and actually do something physically challenging. But yesterday, I, w I decided that I was going to uh, make a big old batch of Professor Paul's Tactical Chili. And I was standing, it's been a while since I did that. I was standing, comma, parentheses, it's been a while. 
So I'm in the grocery store, and I was like, okay, I need the tomatoes and mushrooms, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tick off in my brain, like, remember all the ingredients, make sure I have everything, because, like I said, it's been a while. Like, you know what? Uh, you know what I did, Zach? What did you did, Zach? Uh, I did the, I took this idiot box right here, and I used it for good. I typed in Professor Paul's Tactical Chili into the search bar, and it came up. The article popped up. And uh, if you open the article, it says there at the very top, it's super easy. It says ingredients. You click that, and it takes you right to the ingredients. I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Look at that. Look what I just did. So I was able to stand in the grocery store, open up the ingredients list, and make sure that I had everything I needed. But, Dad, you, it occurs to me, you know what would have been way better? Because you, you said you had to use your idiot box, right? Mm-hmm. And every time you have to use your idiot box for something, that's that's not a good thing. You want to be okay. able to you want to you want to be able to use it when you want to, right? Right. So what would have been way better is if you had something made out of I don't know paper? some kind of tangible material like a paper, right? Like a book, <laughs> or you know, like uh, like Miss do- like Miss Nancy's ranch cooking book, which includes the chili recipe, Professor Paul's tactical chili, as well as like a thousand other amazing recipes. Well, shopusg.com, yeah. and it occurs to me that uh, we missed a ter- we terribly missed a cross promotion uh, option thingy because we do not have a link to the book on that page that you're talking about right now. So I'm going to fix that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ranch cooking, it ain't freaking frittatas, written by none other than the the queen pin of Student of the Gun, Ms. Nancy Markle. Uh, it's a color book. It's the first all-color book that we've ever done, and maybe the last. <laughs> it's not a coloring book. It's a color No, it's not book. a coloring book. It's it's a full-color cookbook. We it's should do got a color book. color ink pages. We should do yeah, a coloring so, book. Well, no. So uh, it would be nice if somebody would buy this book and use it and uh, let Miss Nancy know that they care and they appreciate it and so forth. Do we have any in stock on the, the store? Yes, indeed we do. You can get your own copy right now at shopsotg.com. There you go. There you go. There you go. And it's only available as a paperback. It is not a Kindle because it's a cookbook. So you just need to buy it and have it, live it, love it, learn it, all that good stuff. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. So, um, and if, for, if you're wondering, you're like, well, does, does your tactical chili, does it meet the requirements for the, the guardian challenge? Of course it does. There's no high fructose corn syrup. There's no soy whatsoever. Uh, and there is no vegetable oil, no seed oil whatsoever. And as a bonus, we have a neighbor who is a big time, uh, big game hunter, likes to kill the elk and cut them up into tasty pieces. So what I am actually making right now, what's upstairs right now in the the uh, crock pot is uh, elk chili. I took well, I took one pound of ground elk meat and one pound of ground beef from Wyoming. Wyoming grass-fed, grass-finished beef, and I, I browned the uh, the beef. Uh, I, I browned the meat, and then I put it in the uh, the pot with all of the ingredients, and it is cooking right now. Hopefully, it's cooking right now as we speak. Uh, I, I turned it on. I, this is my first time using. It's not my crock pot. It's Alex's, and it's not really a crock pot. It's like a pressure cooker kind of a thingy, you know, you know. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. But uh, we shall see. We shall see. So there you go. There you go. All right. Moving on. Uh, so get on it. And here's the deal. I've been doing daily check-ins with the Guardian Challenge because I want you guys to have strong bodies and strong brains. And you cannot have a strong brain if you're feeding your body garbage, if you're feeding it dietary poison. If you're putting soybeans and soy filler and soy protein into your diet, you do not have a strong brain. Sorry, it's a fact. If you're taking in high amounts of omega-6, it's causing swelling and inflammation in your muscles, your heart, and your brain. Well, what has high amounts of omega-6? 
seed oils, corn oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower seed oil, things that they call, quote, vegetable oils are high in omega-6s, and that is bad for your body. And of course, high fructose corn syrup is, well, it's freaking corn syrup, and it is terrible for your body. So stop consuming that crap. You'll feel better. Uh, and when as regarding the challenge, you're like, well, it's too late for me because I, no, 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 no. Today is day one for you. If you're not already doing it, today's day one. See that? See how that works? You can start today and go 30 days. Cut all that crap out. Um, and of course, we, we have other information in there and there's something there. So just read it. All right, questions. You got questions, we got answers. If you're listening live in the Discord channel right now and you have questions, go ahead and post them. And Zachary will pay attention. Won't you, Zach? Yes, indeed, I will. He, he promises he will. He promises he'll pay attention. All right, but for now, we're going to jump right into a Duracoat firearm finish moment. All right, about 10, 12 years ago, I guess it was, I jumped into the silencer, suppressor, gun muffler, moderator pool, and I got my first one, and then I got my second one, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I've had, I've had some cans so, for a while. Now, the truth of the matter is, is most cans uh, are finished with either a uh, a bluing or a parkerizing, or some of them like the twenty two cans that have aluminum bodies are anodized or adenized. Um, but uh, if you use them, if you actually go out and use your cans, uh, then what happens to them is well, they they get uh, well they get kind of beat up a little bit, you know the the. The uh, finish it fades and wears, and, and if they're uh, rifle cans and they're and the bodies are made of steel, well, what happens when steel gets used and abused and, and exposed to moisture and so forth? It can rust, right? You're like, oh no, man, that's crazy. It's like, well, that's the deal. Uh, so what Duracoat? You say, well, but if I if you spray like <laughs> if you had a rifle can and you took your normal Krylon or whatever and you sprayed it on there and then you put it on your your weapon and you shot it, it would be, well, you'd end up with an interesting pattern. Let's let's put it that way. You end up with an interesting pattern as it bakes and burns right off. Uh, because in case you haven't uh, noticed or gotten the memorandum, uh, cans get hot. Rifle cans get crazy hot why do they get crazy hot zach why do rifle cans get crazy hot because they're basically just containing explosions over and over again yeah because they're trapping the superheated gas from the rifle shot every time you press the trigger every time you press the trigger the can is filled with superheated gas and you do that over and over and over and over again and that side of the gun gets hot like crazy hot like cook bacon hot have you ever have you seen any of those videos where people wrap bacon around their their suppressors and cook it and stuff and yeah i wonder if it's any good afterwards probably not well i i, <laughs> I would make sure you know it's like well bacon's always good regardless but eh, i wouldn't want to i don't know if i'd want to eat it uh if that can is dirty and nasty but the point is if you have had one for any length of time, or if you are going thinking about buying one or whatever, eventually you're it's gonna get beat up and it's gonna look kind of kind of crappy. Uh, and the the truth of the matter is I have a couple of rifle cans that I've actually used a great deal and eh, look kind of crappy uh, because I've had them for a while and I've actually used them. Um, so what you can do and what Duracoat figured out, what Steve Lauer figured out years ago, a few years ago, was that there are a lot of people in the United States of America that own rifle suppressors now, more than in the, the entire history of our country. Uh, and these people might want to refinish them once they get you know nasty. Or maybe you just want to get one and put a good solid Duracoat finish on it so you don't have to worry about it rusting. How about that? 
So he invented a product called Dura Heat. Dura Heat and the Dura Heat 2.0 high temperature coating is available from Duracoat. And it comes in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors. Uh, you can get it in white, battleship gray. You can get it in desert tan. You can get it in flat, dark earth, gunmetal gray. You can get it in interceptor red if you really want to do that. Uh, matte black, stainless steel finish, and a twilight blue. So uh, if you've got a can, if you've got a rifle can, now, can you do this with, with 22 cans and can you do it with pistol cans? Yeah, you can do it with the pistol cans. Pistol cans, uh, they get hot, but nowhere near as hot as rifle caliber cans do. Uh, that's why they can get away with making aluminum bodies for 22s and stuff like that. You could not make an aluminum body can for a rifle. Well, you could, and then, you know, it would just melt down and, and warp after you shot it a few times and then you'd be done. But, uh, and those things, in, you, if you bought a rifle suppressor, if you bought a suppressor or silencer for your rifle, you know all that was involved in that. That's an investment, right? Do I have to remind you that that thing is an investment? Um, so you want to take care of it. Right? You, you, this is something you're probably going to have for the rest of your life and pass it on to your kids. So uh, uh, they figured it out over at Duracoat. It's called Dura Heat, and uh, you can you can get it in. Uh, Oh, two ounce bottles and four ounce bottles and uh, eight ounce bottles and 16. Uh, if, if, well, 16 ounce bottles, that's a lot. That's a lot of Duracoat. Um, you could do a fleet. You could do an entire fleet of suppressors or anything else. Let's say, you, you know, I don't know. Maybe you want to do something else that gets really, really, really hot. Maybe it's not a can. Maybe it's not a suppressor. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. So there you go, Dura Heat. It is available from Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Check those guys out by clicking the link in the show notes. Yeah, click the link in the show notes. All right, moving on. Our buddies, SDS Sierra Delta Sierra Imports. They are the title sponsor of the show, and you should have heard that at the very beginning. If you didn't, go back and listen a little bit louder. Uh, we've got a... Uh, update uh from them it says uh buy one uh what, what, go back quick dog on it i hate it when they do that when you're looking at something and they have like slideshow you know they have the slideshow on their website and you're looking at it and you're reading and then it goes away I, slow your slideshow down hippie so i can actually see what it says it says buy three or more and save 25 percent px9 magazine so they have px9 mags in stock can i give you guys a little hinty hint so the px9 pistol from sds imports uses a sig 226 pattern magazine now if you've gone if you own a sig model 226 and you have uh gone and looked for replacement mags for that or new mags you might have discovered that they're a little bit pricey they're a little bit pricey and you're like mm, mm, that kind of hurts my butt oh that's kind of expensive well the uh <laughs> the uh, px9 gen 3 magazines will fit and function perfectly well in a sig 226 pistol and the bonus is that the px9s can be had in 15 18 and 20 round configurations are you paying attention you're like oh 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 so i could buy a 20 round px9 magazine and run it out of my sig pistol the answer is yes oh that's pretty cool that's pretty cool. I just got you excited, didn't I? You're like, oh. Uh, what else do they have going? Uh, they are. They have been teasing us. They have been teasing us with a 10 millimeter. A D10 pistol. A 10 millimeter auto. It's a 1911 10 millimeter. Uh, and uh, they're teasing us with that. And maybe, I don't know, maybe if I'm a good little boy, maybe if I, if I, uh, you know, eat all my vegetables, I might be able to get my hands on one of those. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. 
So there you go, SDS Imports. Check them out. Uh, High Point. <laughs> oh, there's that. That's a comp. They're a company. Let's. I have to do this every single week until they update it. Highpointfirearms.com is going to GunCon. <laughs> Oh, uh, one of these days, somebody is going to call Dave and, and say, Dave, you've got to update the website. You have to. I'm begging you. I'm begging you to update the website. Uh, if you go to their socialist media pages, and you're like, I'm sick of going to their socialist media pages and being teased. The Yeet Cannon YC9, uh, <laughs> they're leaning into it, Zach. You know how they're leaning into it? They, they have t gonna, oh. they have they have t shirts. Oh, I thought you were gonna say they they posted that they're gonna debut at GunCon. No. <laughs> two months ago. We're gonna debut at GunCon two months ago. But no, they actually have T shirts. I'm gonna have to get one. I'm gonna have to get one of these uh one of these these T shirts that says Y C nine Yeet Cannon. I think uh, we know somebody that you could talk to about that. You know, I, I bet that if, if I reached out, I could probably find someone who could hook a brother up with the, uh, the Yeet Cannon shirt. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, so, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. If you want to be that guy in your group of friends, get yourself a Yeet Cannon t-shirt and wear it to the range. <laughs> dance, puppets, dance. Ah, uh, J-U-X-X-I dot com, Juxi dot com. What the farfic nougan is that? That's when you say, what the farfic nougan is Juxi dot com. Juxi dot com is a new video media platform. It is a video media platform that is run by Pro 2A, Pro 1A, Pro Constitution uh, folk. Unlike Google and YouTube and every other company that's run out of California by socialist scumbags, Juxi's actually not. So, uh, Zach, do you have it open right now? Can you open up Juxi.com? I can do whatever I want. You can do whatever you want. You're an American. I'm, I'm Tell Juxi me how right many now. people are currently subscribed to the Student of the Gun Juxi channel. Well, I can tell you that very easily. The amount of people that are currently subscribed to the Student of the Gun Juxi channel are... Try to vamp for a minute. Three... Two thousand one hundred seventy-nine. All right. So as of this date, at this point in time, it's two thousand one hundred seventy-nine. That is pathetic. That is chump change. It should be ten grand. So what's your excuse? Why are you not doing it? Oh, you don't have one. Okay. Go to juxxi dot com, juxi dot com. Subscribe to the Student of the Gun channel uh, and get in there because eventually uh, i can you know the writings it's it's out there eventually uh the biden administration or whoever the shadow government running joe biden is or is they're gonna send a memorandum out to youtube and say hey you just need to shut down all these pro-gun people or these pro-constitution people uh, i've noticed that um the, and people are like well well why are you still on facebook and instagram well, because we tried to uh, push the MeWe thing, and that went over like a lead balloon. Uh, I don't know what what to tell you guys, but uh, uh, eventually it's going to be it's just going to be gone, and it won't be there anymore, and you won't have a choice. And so, rather than screw around, and if you're a content creator, and rather than waiting for Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook to cancel you and delete your account, why don't you just migrate all your stuff over to Juxi right now? That way, you know it'll be there. Would you say that is an idea, is that, Zach? Would you say that is an idea? I think it's not just an idea. It's a fantastic idea. It's a fantastic idea, and you should do it. All right, and what also you should do right now is you should close uh, that hole underneath your nose, open up both of your ears, and listen louder. That's what you should do. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Dude. 
That's what you should do. That's what you can do. That's what I believe you should do. All right. Moving on. Brownells Bullet Points brought to you by our good buddies at Brownells. All righty then. So yesterday, Zach and I took a uh, we took a drive out into the western desert, the desert west of Salt Lake City, uh, which is wide. Oh, it's just wide open BLM land. You know, there's nobody there but the jackrabbits and the prairie dogs. And uh, we test fired the ARMED, the Armalite Rifle Minimum Effective Dose Project Gun. So if you have not been paying attention uh, and you're like, what are you talking about? I'm going to tell you. We started out by with I ordered a KE Arms unibody lower receiver. And the one I ordered, you can get them stripped and you have to install the stuff yourself or you can get them completed. And I've, I've built and assembled enough lower receivers in my life that I didn't feel like I needed the practice. So I just went ahead and ordered one that already had the trigger in it and the safety and all that jazz. Now the pins, the pivot pin and the takedown pin, uh, are actually HK style pins. They're not HK pins, but they're like an HK style pin, not like a traditional, uh, AR M4 pin. They come out, they pop in and they pop out. So it's really easy to swap, to pull the, to pull the, uh, what you call the upper receiver off and put it on and so forth. Now the upper receiver, this was a, this was a, um, a horse of another color. I actually went to the Brownells catalog. Now the KE arms, uh, lower receiver, unibody lower came from Brownells. Uh, and it had to go to an FFL cause it's actually a serialized firearm part, but, uh, the upper receiver that I had, did I tell the story about trying to order one and the, the douchebags just canceled my order with no explanation? Did I tell that story? I don't think you told it on the show. Oh, I didn't tell the story. So, uh, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm working on for the, the minimum effective dose is I'm trying to figure out what do you need and what don't you need? And what I believe you really don't need uh, unless you're, you know, maybe if you're in the, in the Marine Corps or the army or you're living out in the desert or whatever, uh, but you really don't need the forward assist and, and you can do without the dust cover. Oh no, just, just shut up, calm down. So I was looking for a, a, what they call it. They're called stripped uppers or slick uppers. Uh, and it's an AR 15 style upper receiver that does not have, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't have a forward assist. Uh, and it doesn't have a dust cover. It's just a, a stripped or a slick upper receiver, right? So uh, I was looking for one because I actually had a version of one. And uh, I ordered I ordered it. And it said, thank you for your order, yada, yada, yada. And a couple of days went by. And I said, well, I should probably check and see where that's at. And so I, I went into my email. And uh, there's an, an email from the company. And it says, your order's been canceled. Okay. No explanation as to why. Just your order has been canceled. Uh, like, well, I guess just fornicate me, right? So I responded to it. I said, are you going to tell me why or is it just going to be a mystery? And I sent the email to the company and I got no response. So what did I learn? I learned that that company is dead to me and I will never speak their name in public, give them free advertising. And I certainly will never buy anything from them ever. Uh, cause that is just, that is just terrible customer service. Like, well, we're just going to go ahead and cancel your order and not tell you why suck it. Like, All right. So fortunately I've been playing this game for a long, 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 long time. And I have not one, but actually numerous Rubbermaid type totes containers, you know, those clear plastic containers uh, with various gun parts in them, right? I've got, if you need a pistol grip, if you need a generic A2 pistol grip for an AR, let me know. I can hook a brother up. <laughs> if you need an A2 birdcage uh, flash suppressor slash compensator, let me know. I can hook a brother up. 
Well, one of the things that I had in the box was I had an up a stripped upper receiver that I got from my friend Randy at DPMS way back when. I was uh, he sent me uh, a bunch of parts uh, for you know various AR fifteen projects, and one of the parts that he sent me was this stripped upper. And at the time, I didn't have any, I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't have a project where I could use it, so I just kind of like set it aside. Uh, and what, it was unique because what Randy did was he he put pick rails on not only the top but also on the left and the right. Um, uh, it's kind of it's a unique monstrosity. And of course, this is obviously before Randy sold DPMS to the Freedom Group, and then the Freedom Group screwed it up royally, and they had to sell it. Uh, I believe they sold it. I believe. Um, that the parent company who owns Palmetto State Armory now owns the DPMS brand name. So there's that. But point being is I had a stripped upper. I was like, okay, cool. So I ordered a rifle, a barrel, a gas tube, and uh, various accoutrements. I got the some furniture from Magpul. Put it all together. So here we are. I've got... Oh, I, I got a, a Yankee Hill flash suppressor from to put on the front of the barrel from Brownells from their catalog and put it all together, right? So it's ready to go. Zach and I, we load up the truck and we drive out into the desert and we get out. And uh, I had on hand because it was a, I went to a Bushnell event a couple of years ago, two summers ago, and I got one of their Bushnell AR red dot sites okay well you know what the heck bushnell ar red dot site i had it on hand it had a a, a same plane uh riser on it which means that uh well you know it 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 same plane with your it co-witnesses with your sites because i had an a2 oh the other thing did i tell them that i put a and a magpul buis backup site so i got a magpul backup site on there i've got an a2 front site housing and then I, I decided to put this this red dot. So cool. Go out there and I decide and I'm I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go ahead and zero it. I'm gonna zero this thing. So I you know, I slow fire three rounds and then I make an adjustment and I slow fire another three rounds and make an adjustment and then I, you know, slow fire three more rounds and uh, and I'm where I need to be, right? And didn't have any problems with the gun. You know, fired one, two, three rounds, good. One, two, three rounds, good. So we do that. We're taking some pictures. We're shooting some video. And and uh, things seem to be going well. <laughs> and, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm rotating between uh, Magpul, brand new uh, Gen 3 P mags. Well, I don't know what happened. I literally don't know what happened, but, and Zach, when I got back, I took everything apart and I, I, I eyeballed it and examined it all. And I didn't see any weird drag marks or stress marks or, or anything. So I, I don't know. Well, about, I don't know, what would you say? 30, 40 rounds. And no, and I, I handed it to Zach. I handed the, the, the completed rifle to Zach. And I said, here, go ahead and shoot this. And Zach, did you shoot it? Yes, indeed. This is the strangest part because I had no problem about uh, shooting it. I went through like what half a magazine or so, full magazine. It was like yeah, it was like fifteen, twenty rounds. You, you didn't have a problem and, at all. And it's Zach, he, you know, emptied a magazine. I was like, cool. I went and got another magazine. We had different ammo. We had Black Hills ammo. I had some military five five six ammo. Uh, I had a variety pack of of, of like miscellaneous ammo, and and uh, so I'm. Sh- I, we start shooting it you know we're like i like i said 50 rounds or so into the test and i start receive i start getting stoppages like i fire one two click failure to chamber around what the what i'm like all right i you know tap rack chamber around one two double feet or still pipe no it wasn't still pipe, it was a double feet i'm like what fair like what is going on here and I was getting really frustrated. I'm like, and I, you know, I, I know how to build guns. I'm not a, a gunsmith. Well, I'd also per, I'd also brought with me the uh, BRN 177, which is a faithful reproduction 
uh, of the original Colt XM177 Echo 2, the model that would eventually become the Car 15. If you guys are fans of Vietnam or Vietnam movies, uh, you know, Vietnam era stuff, you know the XM177. Uh, it's, we've, we've done innumerable videos and discussions about it. The, the Brownells version that I have is a fantastic gun. I've shot thousands of rounds through it. Right? We featured it numerous times. So I thought, well, all right, well, is it the lower that, that's giving me problems? Is something going on with the lower? Is something going on with the upper? Is there something going on with the gas system or the bolt carrier? You know, why is it not grabbing around? But if it's not grabbing around, that's not the same as a double feed. What is going on? So here's what I did. I disassembled the new gun, the ARMED gun. I disassembled it. And then I disassembled the, <laughs> I disassembled the, the XM177 and I swapped them. I put the the new uh, I put the new upper on the the brown the XM seven seven lower one seven seven lower loaded it up fired five rounds no problem boom 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 like uh, okay so that's it the other one so I have the KE arms lower with the XM one seven seven upper in it loaded up shoot boom 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 no problem. <sighs> what the f so now i was like all right so the lower obviously works i'm like okay i'm gonna test it more so we loaded up more magazines we loaded up more magazines i put i put the original gun back together started shooting it same thing same problem like all right we'll fornicate this took it apart built two franken guns with the other parts and stuffed magazines in them rapid fired them blah, 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 blah. no problem zero malfunctions zero stoppages so where am i <laughs> so what the what so you could say oh well, it's the polymer lower that's the problem the polymer lower is not yeah but i put the the uh the basically the car 15 upper on it on that lower shot it no problem no issues zero well, maybe it's upper, maybe it's the gas system, or maybe it's the bolt carrier, maybe it's whatever. Okay, so I put that one on the, you know, the the uh, retractable stock aluminum lower. Put that on there. Boom, 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 boom. Zero issues. Hundred percent ran. Hundred percent. So here I am. <laughs> That's where we are. <laughs> uh, is anybody jumping in the Discord saying with with an opinion about what might might be doing that? Uh, we have one person typing, so maybe they'll be able to enlighten us. Well, I guess the uh, the name of the game. That's the name it, of the game. That's the name of the game. Uh, I haven't heard that song in forever. Man, I, I like that song, too. I have an it's, encyclopedic knowledge of random. Uh, that song is hard to find. That song's hard to find uh, because that was used in the Tropic Thunder soundtrack. Do, 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 do. That's the name of the game. Do, 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 do. Good song. Um, so anyway, where am I at? I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. I know that that when I made it the brand new upper receiver, the whole upper receiver group that I built and assembled on a another lower, it ran 100. percent And I know when I took an, an original factory upper, put it on the KE Arms lower. It ran a hundred percent. So, but apparently they don't like to be together. <laughs> apparently, they're we're just gonna have to come up with an amicable divorce, and uh, I don't know. But uh, during during this whole process, I actually. And I feel dumb for not knowing this, but uh, my, my buddy Randy, I sent him a picture of the old DPMS upper that he had sent me way back when. And I was like, hey, brother, do you remember this? And he's like, geez, that's a blast from the past. Uh, All right, Randy. Wait, wait, real quick, we're getting answers. Okay. Did you check the buffer? Did you try swiping out the buffer? No, I didn't because because the uh well if it's the buffer you say oh it's a buffer you know see the buffer buffer and this buffer spring and, and so forth come with it 
Now, I put the new upper onto the lower and didn't have a problem, right? And, bo- and you say, oh, well, the gas systems are different. Actually, no. The gas systems on both guns are identical. They're both carbine length gas systems. So the gas transfer should be essentially identical. Any other any other theories? <laughs> um, uh, people are typing. Yeah. So this is what uh, my 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 buddy Randy, after he sold DPMS to uh, Freedom Group and they destroyed it, uh, he started a new company called Luth AR. Well, guess what Randy's doing? Randy is actually selling slick upper receivers slick or you know minimalist or whatever you want to call them so i contacted randy the other day and i was like hey brother Uh, he calls it a low drag upper receiver it's called a low drag high speed low drag upper receiver and it is a basic it's a it's, it's a well it's it's a slick it's it's a uh um whatever you want to call it it basically low drag no drag so what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue this project and i'm going to i'm going to build an upper using the low drag hopefully the low drag luth ar and if this is something you're interested in if this is something you're like oh that sounds like a kind of like a cool thing uh well you can uh, go to luth dash ar.com l-u-t-h dash ar.com and check that out for yourself and he's got a lot of other stuff too he's got a a really slick uh 1022 ruger 1022 uh because the 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 1022 is is basically it's like the ar of rim fires uh people like to to modify them change them uh put new stocks put new this put new that so the 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 mo- it's a modular chassis uh and it's it's pretty slick you can adjust the cheek piece you can adjust the length of pull uh and if you ever wanted to build uh a 22 uh, a ruger t- uh 1022 like a match gun or a sniper gun or well, not really sniper but kind of like a match gun uh you could do that so uh check that out check that out from our buddies at luth ar luthar.com all right so that that's that is the update <laughs> that's the update for the uh and what's and, and you say if if it was going to be something mechanically wrong you know you would have thought that it would have been mechanically wrong from the beginning right not materialize after 40 or 50 rounds I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I'll let you guys ruminate on that while you listen to Zach talk for a second. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So uh, it is time. What is it time for? Have you guys, is anybody following the same video of Pastor freaking out to different breakdowns? (laughs) You're like, that is a long, long, long page it's it's worth it though it's worth it uh, all right let's go on to our student of the gun homeroom and is brought to you by our good buddies at crossbreed holsters Do 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 do. There you go. There you go. And what is the theme? What is the? I want you to write a theme. Zach, what is the theme 
of the student in the gun homeroom. Well, the theme is very simple. It's being dangerous on demand. That's what it's the theme of today is. Dangerous uh, on demand. That is the continuous theme. And it is be dangerous on demand. You mean like uh, when I know that I'm going to go to a bad neighborhood at late at night? I don't go to those. I don't go to bad neighborhoods late at night. I don't go anywhere I shouldn't go. So says Joe Reasonable Man. I don't think I need to carry a gun. I'm not paranoid like you. Well, well, mm. Zach, would you go ahead and care to give us the deets, the yes. details? Yes, indeed. A uh, Colorado man shoots bear inside his home with a 40 caliber pistol. This was published on August 19th, 2022. The so. Last week, weekend, Colorado homeowner Ken Malden ha- got a huge shock, one that had quickly had him jumping into action to protect his family. The Steamboat Springs, Colorado homeowner awakened to hear his wife screaming, There's a bear in the house! As a P- Associated Press reported. There's a bear in the house! There's a bear in the house! The couple's three children were sleeping, just one floor down in the couple's split-level home. Malden's wife, Kelly, was first awakened before dawn by the family's barking dogs. The AK- I can imagine the dog is like, hey, wake up, people. Wake up. Wake up. Now is the, now is the time for me to be barking at something. She walked to the door of the couple's bedroom and found herself staring at a male black bear weighing about 400 pounds around 10 feet from the dining room, she said the outlet. That's a big bear. Mm-hmm. Malden grabbed his 40 caliber pistol, quote, took his wife's place at the door, quote, unquote, and shot once, aiming at, for the center of the bear's body. Malden thinks the first shot hit the bear, he told AP, but the bear then charged him and Malden continued firing. The bear got as close as five feet from Malden, then turned towards the stairs leading to the home's front door. So he mag-dumped on this mother lover. Mm-hmm. The bear, quote, crashed through a banister as Malden emptied the gun and slid down the stairs, mortally wounded, the AP reported. The only thing, the only thought was protecting my family and putting that bear down, Malden said. The bear lay on the floor of the lower level of the, hu- of the home, breathing and heaving between Malden and his three children. None so it, it actually it made for the stairs where the mm-hmm. kids were. So Oh, even better. So none of the family members were injured. That's good. Thankfully. He dialed 911. 911, what's your emergency? I just shot a bear. <laughs> I want outside? It. No, in my <laughs> house. <laughs> I shot it. What what why why did you have food in your house? Where did you have food in your house cuz you know bears can smell the food. Yeah, that was their fault. Yeah. Police and Why state did you wildlife build your officers, house where bears live? Police and state wildlife officers arrived a short time later and determined that the bear was dead, they noted. <laughs> the officers <laughs> were impressed by its size. Justin Pollock, a Colorado Parks and Wildlife officer for 21 years, told the AP, quote, I deal with bears a lot, and I'd say this was a big bear, Pollock told the outlet. Bears are very smart. Once they learn that there's easy access to food in a certain area, they're going to keep doing it, said Colorado Parks and Wildlife spokesperson. Oh, yeah, it's it's the people's fault. You shouldn't have food. Thank goodness If you for didn't this. have food, there wouldn't be bears. Thank goodness for this. I'm glad that this is in the books. Colorado law allows people to shoot bears if they feel threatened. Rachel Gonzalez, a spokesperson for Colorado Park, Parks and Wildlife, told the API. Well, well, there you go. There we go. There's more, but it's uh, just it's nothing pertaining to the actual yeah, situation. So, so if, according to... According to the Colorado Parks and Wildlife, uh, if a bear is attacking you, you're allowed to kill it. And there's a video at the top of this uh, of this story of a bear climbing an eight foot bar- chain link fence topped with barbed wire and just zipping right over it like it's not even there. Yeah. So people put it. You're like. Well, if they would have put fences around their house, then then the bears couldn't have got in. It's like, uh, yeah. It says bear bear climbs barbed wire topped fence in twenty four seconds at Florida Air Force Base. So they're like, we got an intruder alert on the south fence. Intruder alert, south fence. And they get up there and they're like, it's a bear. And there he went. 
he just hopped over the fence and he's like, yep, this is where I'm going and this is what I'm doing. And I guess you, I dare you to stop me. And if, if so, you're watching the video right now, you can see what we're talking about. Yeah. Better just st- he's perched up on top of that fence without a care in the world. He's like, oh, he's like, yeah. barbed wire, schmarb wire. I'm going over. How, how thick is the skin on a bear's paws, by the way? Pretty thick. So Pretty he probably thick. didn't even notice. He was like, oh, did like, I step yeah, on a what? pebble? Do, is there pebbles like, on this string? Yeah, weird. What? That's weird. Oh, so what I, what I find most uh, what I find most joyful about this story is that this is the most love that a 40 caliber pistol has gotten in a decade. <laughs> when is the last time you heard a positive story about a 40 caliber pistol? You, so you scratch your head and you're like, I can't remember the last time. <laughs> Oh, but but Mr. Colorado uh, Steamboat Springs man might want to. He probably needs to disassemble his pistol and inspect it and see if the uh, if the pins are broken in there now because he did fire it to. I'm guessing this dude fired it to slide lock. I mean, that's that's kind of the way it happened. I, mean, I feel he, like that's he, an appropriate reaction in that situation. Yeah, when the when the when a bear is like. Rah, rah. And this also when people, why would you think you would need a rifle? For home defense, that's overkill. Why would you think you need a shotgun for home defense? That's overkill. Well, I don't know. Maybe I live in Steamboat Springs and a bear broke into my house. Yes. You mean they weren't camping in the wilderness where they shouldn't have been? No, Mr. Imbecile. Where's Mr. Pogue at? Mr. Pogue, remember, Mr. Pogue is a gun owner, and he's been a gun owner for umpty ump years and never once had to. That's right. You're According to Mr. Pogue, you're more likely to hurt yourself with a gun than you are to ever need it to defend yourself. Because bears don't ever attack until they do. Wild animals don't attack you right up until they do. So, go team moment, uh, uh, dangerous on demand. Colorado homeowner mag dumps 40 cal pistol into bear, 400 pound bear. Yeah, you probably, if, if you're a, a grown ass man, you probably think I'm a I'm a pretty good size man. You know, you're 250, 225, 250, 260. You know, maybe 275. If you're a 275 pound man, you're thinking I'm a I'm a big man. That if if you're 250, this bear just outweighed you by 150 pounds. That's a big bear. And you know, it's like, all right, boo boo. You know, you, you, here's my deal. This I have the same deal with bears as I have with snakes. Is I won't go out into the woods and deliberately look for you to shoot you. However, if you come to the house, it's game over. Okay, that's the bargain that I make with the wild animals. I won't come. Well, I mean, sometimes I will. I'll go in the woods and kill them because they need to be killed. But uh, generally, like with the snakes, when we, we lived in, we lived in, you know, Biloxi, which is like a jungle. And uh, there were poisonous snakes around. And I was like, here's the deal that I had with them. I, I made a bargain. I was like, I won't go out into the woods and deliberately try and find you and kill you. All right. But if you come into the house or onto the porch, it's game over. So, so here's right. kind of the deal you have is for predators, as long as they stay away, you won't hunt them. That's for prey, well. <laughs> as long as they come hang out at your house, then you won't hunt them. <laughs> because it's nice when the deer come around and the bunnies and all that. I know we don't hunt yeah. bunny. We don't hear hunt the deer that that nibble in our front yard. Exactly. But if I go out in the woods and I see one of those suckers, yeah, no. But uh, so real quick, because you were just talking about like, oh man, if you think yourself a big man, then blah 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 blah, right? So this bear was four hundred pounds. And we consider that a pretty big bear, right? That's a big bear, right? Mm. For a black bear, yeah, yeah for it's a, black, a big bear. black bear. That's it's a- not a big. It's not a big grizzly. It would be like a, a juvenile grizzly. Yeah. Still, you look at a ba- uh, at a grizzly uh, black bear and you say 400 pounds. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a big bear. The average male hippopotamus weighs between 3,500 and 9,900 pounds. That's a big. 
That's a big animal. Now that's a big animal. You think you could fight a bear with your bare hands? Okay, maybe. Think you fight a hippo with your bare hands? No, the <laughs> hell you can't. <laughs> a hippo is 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 basically it 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 is it is a killing machine wrapped in thick leather armor, and is nothing but muscle. Oh man. Kodiak bears. Uh, Kodiak bear is a big mother loving bear. And uh, now, Kodiak is actually, uh, they're, they're the OG of bears. They're the original gangster of, of brown bears. What's funny is I'm not a bear biologist because you've got all these different kinds. You've got the American black, you have the brown, you have the Kodiak, you have the polar, and so on and so forth. But. Uh, Long story short, they're predators. No, they're not. They're they like to eat nuts and berries. And da, da, da. No, bears are omnivores. What's an omnivore? An omnivore means it's like you. They eat anything. Anything that will fit in their mouths, they will eat. That is how that works. <laughs> anything that they can fit in their mouth salmon deer you nuts berries whatever picnic baskets you know they'll do so well it's and i'm waiting for the hippies well this bear obviously was conditioned to to what to be a a home invader to be a burglar How, how is this bear conditioned well i mean I mean, it's got to be the people's fault. It's, it's never the animal. It's the people. If they wouldn't have built a house there, then the bear wouldn't have come in. Yep, that's true. If that house wouldn't have been there, then that bear wouldn't have come in. <sighs> Cat in the hat, and that'd be that. That'd be that. I told your mom, I was like, you know, you better be ready. Because a bear, I said, a bear can open a door if it has a T handle, but they don't need the trick is bears don't need, they don't need to turn the knob. They, I'd say a 400 pound bear has enough strength and energy behind it to push in a normal front door. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd say if they just come across some, a door, there's like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Moving on to the story of the day. Duh. And or Aloha. Hawaii struggles to ignore Supreme Court decision while pretending that they're not ignoring it. <laughs> Story from August 17th, 2022, uh, Amoland.com. Amoland.com. All right. What does it say, Zach? You got a story open for us there, brother? I will tell you exactly what it says because this story be is good. from August 19th, 2022. Hawaii removes, quote, exceptional case, unquote, requirement for concealed, not open carry. Question mark? Yeah. So, uh, and thank you, Dean we- Weingarten, because that's a it's weird a name. Dean Weingarten, yep. Yeah, that one. He was just, actually, he was just on, uh, I was on as a guest of Lock and Load Radio here a few days ago, not, and uh, he actually came on the show right after me. Oh, well, good for yeah. him. He's, he, uh, you were his opening act. I was his opening act. You're welcome, Dean. So, Hawaii has okay. had... The most restrictive policy of all states regarding issuing permits to carry in public. Really? Yep. Hmm, surprising. Oh, yeah. Either it's not surprising. Or They're communists. Well, I mean, when you look at like California, New York, et cetera, it's like. That's yeah, Hawaii is even worse. Yeah, They're, that's some competition. Hawaii, the Hawaiian island chain is beautiful and it is populated by a bunch of socialist scumbag malcontents. Well, you got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. All right. In the last few decades, the number of permits issued has been in the single digits. That's right. Ooh. From the StarAdvertiser.com, Hawaii has among the strong, strictest gun laws in the nation. So strict, said attorney Alan Beck, that Hawaii essentially bans carrying guns outside the home. It has been practically impossible to get a permit to carry a loaded gun in public, he said. In the past 22 years, there have been four permits issued in Hawaii, said Beck who represents various residents ch- challenging Hawaii gun laws. Now, real quick, I want to say this. Just looking at this, say there have been four in the last 22 years. Mm-hmm. So are you saying that there have been less than 22 people who have reported, hey, my ex-husband threatened to kill me, or something along those lines? 
Oh, it doesn't matter. Just a thought. It doesn't matter. Well, and you, know, oh. and you know that those four were like best friends of the sheriff Probably. or like or <laughs> donated heavily to the reelection campaign for the attorney general. <laughs> yeah. Just a thought. The United States Supreme Court specifically mentioned Hawaii as a as violating the Second Amendment and the USR and PA v. Bruin decision. It was clear that Hawaii's law allowing police to arbitrarily deny permits is permits to carry is an, is unconstitutional. At this yep. point, I don't think it's arbitrary with, with a freaking zero point zero 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 one percent approval rate. I think it's pretty strict. Yeah, it's like the answer is no. Yeah, Hawaii's attorney general has issued a formal legal opinion in the form of a letter. We Ooh, just got I can't letter. wait. We just got a letter qualifying the response to the Bruin decision by Holly T. Shikata. The Attorney General of Hawaii. From, All right. What, what does Holly have to say? From ag.hawaii.gov, we advise that as to applicants applications for concealed carry licenses, the chiefs of police should no longer require that an applicant in an expe- exceptional case show reason to fear the applicant's person or property. To the no, 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 no. You skipped property. it. You skipped it. Something. Okay. I... Attorney General, legal opinion, form of a letter, blah, 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 from ag.hawaii.gov. Stop. Adv- start in the, the, the quotes. That the applicant in an exceptional case show reason to fear injury to the applicant's person or property. What I miss? You said to fear the in- to fear the applicant's person or property. Oh, to fear the to fear injury to the applicant's person or property, unquote, in order to obtain a concealed carry license HRS symbol 134-9A. The Mm. chiefs of police should continue to enforce all other statutory requirements for obtaining a concealed carry license, except for the citizenship requirement as applied to lawful permanent residents and U.S. nationals. Thus, the Hawaii AG interprets Bruin as narrowly as possible. She specifically states that Bruin does not apply to open carry carry characterizes as quote unconcealed carry licenses whatever furthermore we advise that as to unconcealed carry licenses the chiefs of police should continue to enforce all requirements for an unconcealed carry license that were applicable before bruin this excludes the citizenship requirement as applied to lawful permanent residents and u.s nationals an applicant must still, among other things, sufficiently indicate an urgency or need to carry a firearm and that the applicant is engaged in the protection of life and property. <laughs> they just don't get it, do they? Actually, they do get it. See, this is the thing with, with scumbags and liberals and socialists is they they don't care they they love the courts when they can use the court to push their agenda on the people so if they what they loved the supreme court when the supreme court said you can kill a baby on demand they loved that when the supreme court 40 years ago said well we're just going to go ahead and leave it up to the states to well actually they didn't they said that the states aren't allowed to stop you from killing your baby on demand right they love the court then then when the court says you know actually we took a look at that and the fact of the matter is is nowhere in the constitution does it say it is your your legal lawful constitutional human right to kill another human because it's going to be inconvenient to you it's not there they're like ah, the supreme court is terrible oh, the supreme court's terrible i thought you love the supreme court see they love the courts when they have activist judges on the benches that can push their agenda. And then when it doesn't go their way, they're like, oh, well, we're just going to go ahead and ignore that. They're out of control. They're the courts out of control. Like, that's funny because you love the court when it sides on with you. That's like the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, what do you call it? The college, the electoral college. When the, when their candidate wins, based on the electoral college they're like oh yeah that's fine it's perfectly fine 
But if the Electoral College goes against them, it's antiquated and we need to eliminate it because it's a threat to our democracy. So here we have Hawaii who's been thumbing its nose at the Constitution. And you're like, well, there's no crime in Hawaii, Paul. There's no crime in Hawaii. There's all kinds of crime in Hawaii. Have you never watched Dog the Bounty Hunter? Uh, Hawaii has a terrible drug addiction problem. They have a terrible freaking unemployment problem. They have a terrible welfare problem, and they have lots of crime. Well, but they have super strict gun laws, and citizens aren't allowed. Yes, the citizens who follow the rules aren't allowed, but the criminals who are going to stab you to death are. Funny how that works. So I thought this was interesting. So the, in the quote, she's like, well, I mean, um, so, and, and what is even says Hawaii is about, uh, her legal, legal opinion is, is uh, we advise the applications for concealed carry license that the applications, the chiefs of police should no longer require the applicant in an exceptional case, show reason to fear injury. However, however, they should continue to enforce all enforce all statutory requirements for obtaining a concealed carry license. And what does that mean? What that means is, well, that you have to give them money and fill out applications and, and have a this and a that and the da 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 da. But what the Bruin case, what the Supreme Court says is that the citizen is not required to prove to the state need they are not required to justify the need for a constitutional right. That, that's, it's that in a nutshell. The decision says that the people don't have to prove to the state that they have a requirement or a need to exer- exercise a constitutional right. Because, well, it's almost as if, Zach, that the, that the Supreme Court justices said, you know what? If the people have to go to the government and beg them for permission to do something, then that's not a right. <laughs> that's a privilege. If you have to go to the government and say, please, sir, may I have some constitutional rights, please? What? If you have to beg the government... For, to exercise a right, then it's not actually a right. It's a privilege. <gasps> yeah. So uh, what we have now is we have an attorney, this this attorney um, who is, is uh, what, what was his name? It was uh, da, 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 Beck. Yeah. Uh, Alan Beck is an attorney. So what they're going to have to do is, here we are again in America, we're going to have to spend thousands and tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars to sue the government to get them to obey the law. That's how basically what we're doing. The government is violate the government of Hawaii, the state government in Hawaii is currently in violation of the constitution of the United States. Now you say, well, they can do whatever they want. Tenth amendment says 10th amendment. Yep, the Tenth Amendment says, what does the Tenth Amendment say, Zach? What did the Tenth Amendment say? Because I know that they... they, The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to by the states, are restricted to the states respectively or to the people. Are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Yes. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states. You see, if it if they hadn't mentioned, if we didn't have a Bill of Rights, if we didn't have a Bill of Rights, then they could then Hawaii could be like, hey, Tenth Amendment, man, we can do whatever we want. Ah, but here's the thing. Amendment two says shall not be infringed. Amendment 2 is part of the United States Constitution. The Constitution is the supreme law, and in order to be a state in the United States, you had to agree 
to follow the rules. You had to join in the compact. And when you openly violate that, you are violating the compact between the people and their government. The state of Hawaii is in open revolt against the Constitution. They're pretending that they're not. They're pretending that it's it's all orderly and it's reasonable and yada yada but the fact of the matter is the supreme court says that the people do not have to prove to the state a need they do not have to demonstrate need to their masters in order to exercise a constitutional right so whether she changed she slightly just little tweak and here's the thing that this this chick, this Holly Shinaka, Sikataka, Sikata, whatever, uh, she thinks that this making this little tiny tweak to the law is going to keep her safe. They're like, well, OK, the Supreme Court said that we specifically that Hawaii is in direct violation of the Second Amendment of the Constitution. We're going to make this little tiny change. But this attorney guy, he, he's, I mean, I'm sure he's not a fool. He's gonna be like, yeah, so you went from issuing four permits to eight. <laughs> Just based on the fact that they're denying applications, based on that fact alone, shows that they're requiring the citizens to prove need, to demonstrate need to them before they allow them to exercise a right which puts them in direct violation of the bruin decision which puts them in direct violation of the second amendment so hello or duh and or aloha to paraphrase our good friend uh, sterling archer duh and or aloha you're violating the law and making that one little tiny sentence tweak is not going to get you out of it so good luck to attorney Beck uh, as he sues the ever living crap out of the state of Hawaii. And we hope that the state of Hawaii is thoroughly punished. But the, you know, the sucky things act is what does that be? If and when the uh, this is going to go to probably a district court, this will have to be taken to a district court and a district court is going to they're going to cite the Bruin case and they're gonna be like, yeah, you guys are in violation. And uh, but if they get penalized, they'll just steal them. They'll just steal money from the people. The people, you know, the the people in government that are violating the law, they're not actually going to be punished. There, there's going to be no repercussions. They they might have to eventually go. Well, okay, we'll, we'll we'll create a shall issue system. But before we do that, but before we do that. We're going to create a shall issue system that says we shall issue, but you have to undergo a doctorate level concealed carry program put on by the state before you're allowed. (laughs) So aloha and or duh, keep an eye on the state of Hawaii as they continue to thumb their nose and pretend that the constitution isn't actually the constitution that they don't have to, uh, (laughs) they don't have to, uh, they're, they're special they're special all right tomorrow tomorrow on thursday's bonus hour episode supplemental exercises and sweet sweet irony sweet sweet irony yeah we're going to talk about that leadership lessons fighting fitness and a cool story uh from the west coast and ladies and gentlemen i think that brings us right up to the end cat in the hat and that be that remember you're a beginner once but you're a student for life We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. 
Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.